I'm very happy today because we uh, apparently are numerous geeks, and uh, I, I have been a geek for many, many years. Even when I was 15, I had been a geek for several years already. I had been programming for many years, uh, thanks to my dad. And I was spending hours trying to program, program games, program images, program music. And coding is super fun because you have a chance to create things and at the same time you have to be logical, you have to be analytical. And that's what makes coding so fun and programming so fun. And so when I was 15, I was in a sense trying to play Lego with these code lines, these concepts, these images. And I was amazed because I discovered that other people were playing Lego, but with reality. I saw that some people at the end of the 80s managed to play Lego with atoms. And for the first time, and I remember when I was 15, this image was around the world in all the news, because for the first time, people were able to manipulate atoms one by one, and using 35 xenon atoms, they were able to write IBM. And for me, it was very impressive, even though when you're 15, you don't really understand what an atom is. And even now, with all this uh, wave and particle stuff and uh, zombie cats uh, dead and alive, uh, it's very, uh, very difficult to understand. So just to give you an idea of how small the objects that we're dealing with are, Imagine that you start from a hair strand. So, like mine might actually be uh, thinner and thinner. So a hair strand is very thin. It's uh, 0.05 millimeters, so 50 microns. So 50 microns is 50,000 nanometers, 50,000 billionth of a meter. So it's, it's still quite, quite big. Now, if you go a bit smaller, and you reach the size of a DNA strand, then the diameter of a DNA strand is just two nanometers. So you know that DNA is very long and that we have DNA in all of our cells, but the reason we can pack DNA inside our cells is that it's actually tiny. The diameter of DNA is two billionth of a meter. And if you go even smaller, to the size, you reach the size of a water molecule where you have, you know, water H2O, so you have two hydrogen atoms here in white and one oxygen atom. And then the distance, the average distance between an oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom is just 0.1 nanometers, one angstrom. So that's the size of the objects people doing research in nanoscience are dealing with. And so the example I showed you about IBM was 20, 25 years ago. And now, all around the world, we are hearing about carbon nanotubes, and we ha we've had examples today, carbon nanotubes being used in bikes or nanoparticles being used in sunscreens. And we hear a lot about nanoscience, but still fundamental research continues in the labs. And for example, in Caltech, Paul Rothmond is designing objects thanks to DNA. So I told you that DNA is tiny, two nanometers wide, and Paul Rothmond is able to build objects using DNA strands because DNA is able to fold in some shapes. And so you can write a computer program that tells you that if you want to build a nano smiley or a nano star, then you can just use a given DNA sequence and the DNA will fall into this sequence. And you have a fascinating TED talk by Paul Rothmond about this technology and how he learns how to build new objects. So it's still fundamental research, how he learns how to build this type of objects. And for us, what's, for us in my research group, what's very inspiring is the people who try to mix different approaches. For example, here, so it looks complex. What we have here is a cancer detector. And it mixes several disciplines. Here you have actually a protein, an antibody, which is able to detect cancer. In this case, I think it's prostate cancer. 
it is attached to a carbon nanotube. And um, as you know, carbon nanotube conducts electricity. And so if you put this carbon nanotube between electrodes here, then you are able to measure the current that goes inside the carbon nanotube. And the thing, the fantastic thing, is that when a cancer marker is attached to this antibody, then the current inside the nanotube changes. And so you are able, using this nanodetector, nanosensor, to detect much more sensitively cancer markers. And what we find inspiring in this example is that it actually combines several disciplines. You have biology, and you have material science, and you have electronics. And the thing is that it's actually very, very difficult to do this type of research, because as you know, science progresses, knowledge progresses, and everything becomes hyper-specialized. So it's very rare to, to find somebody who has a, a PhD in Chinese literature, to have also a PhD in, uh, in biology, or even in the fields of nanoscience, to have someone with a PhD in biology and a PhD in uh, chemistry. So it is actually very difficult to do this type of research where you have to combine different expertise inside a single object to make new things, to solve big problems. And so what we're trying to do in my group is a software where people will be able to combine expertise, combine biology, physics, chemistry, electronics, optics, to uh, exchange information and work together. And so I'm going to try to do a demo. So this software is called Samson for software for adaptive modeling and simulation of nanosystems. And it looks like this. It looks like a traditional CAD application that you would use to, uh, to build a car or to, uh, to design a plane or um, macro objects. But you can use it to study and design nano objects. So here, for example, I have a carbon nanotube. And what I can do is just look at it for now and measure its properties. For example, if I move and I go closer to this atom here, then I can label it. And I see that this is a carbon atom. So the convention here is that in gray, I have carbon atoms. And I can also measure distances. So you know now that probably you knew already that 1.4 angstrom is 0 0.14 nanometers. So you see the, the size of these objects. And you see that a carbon nanotube is just a cylinder of carbon atoms folded together. Okay. And so what I can do, if I want to study this, so may maybe one last thing I could measure is this angle here inside this uh, cycle, carbon cycle. But what I could want to do is study how this carbon nanotube is going to change if I modify its topology, if I modify the connections, if I do chemical reactions with the atoms. And so what I'm going to do is apply a simulator to this carbon nanotube. And then I can just press play and begin to play with atoms. And so you see that I changing the dimensions of my bonds here, my chemical bonds. And if I pull strongly enough, then I'm breaking bonds. And the simulator tells me that in this situation, the carbon atoms would like to move there and would like to, to fold in this direction. And so I can continue this operation and do it everywhere. And actually, you could guess what's going to happen because you all have seen a soccer ball. So I just told you that a carbon nanotube, it's a cylinder. And the reason it is a cylinder, it's because it's composed of hexagons. But if you have seen a soccer ball, you know that it alternates hexagons and pentagons. And that's why this structure is spherical. And so here, I'm beginning to have a curvature and the nanotube is beginning to fold together because I'm creating pentagons in, instead of hexagons. So I can continue like this and use other tools. Maybe I can apply control points and say that I want 
this carbon atom to never move, but then I would like this one to move closer and so that I can fold a nanotube and study what would happen if I deform it, etc. So this is a physical phenomenon called buckling, and it's interesting to see how solid a carbon nanotube is going to be under pressure, under tension. But the thing, of course, is that we want to make this type of things work in conjunction with other disciplines. We would like to integrate other objects, such as proteins, for example. So what I can do is just apply a similar sets of tools, but for proteins instead. What I can do here is visualize the secondary structure of the protein. So in the body, proteins tend to adopt stable shapes. And here we have a helix because that's actually very stable. That's a structure that's stabilized because of these um, invisible connections between the oxygen atoms and the hydrogen atoms. They tend to like being close to each other. And so what we can do is again apply the same type of tools, but this time to unfold the protein because we we are trying to understand how the protein structure is influenced by its sequence, for example. Or I would like to, to see what would happen if I change the structure and then I break my helix here. And so the goal, again, is to, to use this tool to make people in different fields, biology, chemistry, physics, work together and design, design new objects to try to solve, um, to solve issues. And um, so I told you that uh, I think uh, that quantum mechanics is uh, mysterious. And so, for example, I could try to uh, apply, uh, to study quantum mechanics by applying another type of simulator to this, um, to this uh, benzene molecule. So here, I can, I have a different simulator, different model, so I can still break bond and create bonds. But because this is now actually trying to solve an approximation of quantum mechanics, I can study the probability that electrons are at a given position in the molecule. So what I'm doing here is I'm visualizing what's called the electron density, which tells me where the electrons are when the molecule has this shape. And so what I can do is, again, move, move this molecule. And so what happens here is that this hydrogen atom is attracted to this carbon atom, and they merge their electron clouds, and that's how the chemical bond is formed. And so I can do, again, this type of, this type of things. And so that's all nice. It's a software that you can use to um, to work together that researchers uh, could use to, uh, to combine uh, ideas in biology, in physics, and chemistry. But we think that uh, what's important, it's not only the, the software, but the way you're going to uh, distribute it, how uh, people are going to be able to exchange uh, their ideas and their tools inside, um, inside this uh, Samsung uh, software. So what we have done is we have designed this um, website that works actually like websites that exist for a smartphone. If you have a smartphone, you can download apps for, uh, for your smartphone. And um, this works in a similar way. You have um, Samsung elements that you can download. Um, and so if you, like, if you would like to, uh, to do uh, nanotubes, um, if you're doing research in uh, material science, then you, you will just add uh, a Samsung element for carbon nanotubes. And what we are hoping now is that uh, researchers are going to um, integrate their own expertise inside this type of software and that they will be able to, uh, to work together and uh, address uh, big issues. Thank you very much.